Welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on this 945 AF by Olympic. Has anybody ever heard of these chainsaws? I have not. This is the first time I ever came across one of these. It's a decent saw. I finally got it running. It's got a killer muffler on it. Look at this thing. I love that muffler. Anyway, so what I did, I put a new fuel line in. It was to totally gone and a uh, fuel filter but i wanted to make a video for you guys because i ended up taking the handle off of this and i'm pretty sure you don't have to and the handle was a big pain in the butt so i want to show you how it goes back together if you do take it apart and you don't take pictures because i looked everywhere online i couldn't find videos on this saw i couldn't find too many too much information and even in like the uh, forums and stuff, I couldn't find anything. So I'm going to take the top cover off. I'm going to take the handle off. So if you guys do do this, or if you ever encounter it, you'll know how to put it back together. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. It's got one here on the top, flathead, obviously, <clears throat> holding it in. And you pop it up. But what makes it difficult is the on-off switch here. So you have to maneuver it around that while lifting it up. And I think taking it off is a little bit easier than putting it back on. you got to have everything lined up just perfectly to slide it on and line everything up. So keep in mind that's a little bit of an issue. Like on the steel and huskies, it's a little easier to take the cover off. This one's a little more difficult. With two hands, I grabbed it, pulled up a little bit and back. Once we get it around, there we go. You can see it's clean inside. I should have showed you before. It was kind of dirty, but not too bad. So like on older steels, we have two flat heads here to take off the air filter. No big deal. I thought when I had this apart before, straightforward. Okay, pull back on that, and off comes the air filter. And I knew I needed to get to the carburetor, so I had to take that off. Now on steels, usually you squeeze the trigger, and it'll come forward enough that you can pop the throttle linkage out. Well here, it's inside the handle. So I thought, well if I gotta get the carburetor off, I gotta take that throttle linkage off by taking off the entire handle assembly, which I did. And it was a process, let me tell you. There's two E-clips that hold these pins in that are attached to these grommets for vibration issues. And it is a bugger to take this whole thing off, I'm telling you. Now if you did do that, there's one, two, three, four, five, and then six. You gotta turn the handle a little bit. There's a six screw down in here. And then that takes this side of the handle off. But what I think you can do, which I haven't done yet, and I might be ahead of myself, is you break the nuts loose on the bolts here that hold on the carburetor. And if you ever worked on a steel, the, the, uh, the bolts down here, they have like a hex head that sits behind the carburetor, which kind of keeps it in place. Well, these, I think if you break these nuts loose, the bolts, you can actually unthread them and then pull this out without bending the uh, throttle linkage and I think that's the proper way to take off this carburetor. And like I said, there's not a whole lot of information out there. So this is kind of a trial here. Even though I did take it apart, I never did it this way yet. Before I do that, I want to mention how to get the choke detached. It, it has like a little pin down here. You use something to pry against this. That's why that spring's there. And that is actually attached to like a piece of plastic. So that could be something that breaks, so you gotta be careful. But basically you compress this and that little pin down there will come out and you flip it around, that'll detach the choke. So that's uh, out of the way. Okay, so what I did is I compressed it and then turned, turned it up and that freed it. Now we can break these two nuts loose with an eight millimeter. OK, 
Okay, I'm so I'm just going to turn the saw on its side here and take the gas cap, open that up to relieve any pressure. So when I take the fuel line off here, it shouldn't spray out a bunch of fuel. And you want to do that before you take these bolts out the whole way. It'll be a little easier to do. And then we'll test uh, back these bolts out the whole way and pull those out. Okay, that's off. I need to pull the bolts out. And you notice there's a little gasket here. <clears throat> so now it might be hard to do with one hand, but I'm going to try and maneuver this around and get that throttle linkage detached. So I have it tilted to the left, well, tilted this way, and it looks like, and if I had two hands on it, it might be a little easier, but now you can see I can kind of work it around, and I think I'll be able to get that linkage apart without taking off the handle. But we're going to take the handle apart. I just wanted to show you guys, if you did have to get to the carburetor, that this method should work without taking the handle off. And it did come right off. Here's a look at the carb, the Tillotson. Looking for any other markings on it that might. What's that say? HK40A342. In case you were looking for parts, that's probably what you'd need to know. So, a quick little update I got five screws out. One, two, three, four. One that sits down here makes five. I took the two E clips out. And just remember, when you take those out, be very careful because those could go flying. My next step is to push these two pins through. And then I'm going to tilt the handle back. And there's a six screw right there that we'll have to take off. And this last one's really tight. You've got to just get it to where you can get a Phillips head in there and take it out. Okay, I got the last screw out. Here's the next issue. These rubber grommets are in here so tight, that's a real pain in the butt. Getting it out and especially putting it back in. So just be mindful of that. Once I get this grommet out, I'll be able to pull this left side of the handle out. Okay, grommets are out. UPS driver going by. camera now here's I'm just gonna pull out the whole way here we go here's the issue I ran into and thank goodness I can't take the credit for this I had so much trouble mind you I wasn't paying attention when I did this I had to call my neighbor over because I spent a few hours trying to figure out because I pulled this all apart because I was frustrated trying to figure out how this spring set in there so me and my neighbor thank you buddy jesse my man came over and we looked at this and i said i i'm pretty sure that spring sat underneath and it didn't come flying out when i took that handle off so carburetor throttle linkage sits in like that sits down over here Well, let me show you what it looks like on the back. See this little, little tip right here, that little kicker? That's where the long side of this spring sets into. I was trying to put it in like this. I had it in like that, but like I said, it was retaining in here somehow and I couldn't figure it out. Well, this is how it goes, guys. So I had to get someone to help me. Here's the throttle linkage goes through the top here, just like that. The hole here goes through the pin down here. Can you see that, Mr. Cameraman? Okay. Now, we take our spring. Here's the top. Come over here, Mr. Cameraman. There's a pin right here. This is gonna go down through that. This goes behind the back of that 
it sits down in that little notch I told you about. And then the center of that spring goes down over this little pin down here. And then we take this, this sits on that pin. Get that all lined up. Comes down like this, sits inside like that. And you have to keep tension on it with your thumb while grabbing the left piece of the handle and slipping that all down together like we how we pulled it off so it it takes a lot of work to get that back together but that's what i wanted to show you guys because i i lost a lot of time trying to figure out how this spring went back in there because i wasn't paying attention i took it apart too quick so that's what i really wanted to show you guys in this little clip that's the whole reason i took the handle off because there's nothing out there on youtube not a whole lot of information and if you're working on this old saw, this is going to be a great reference. So that's it for this clip. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put that back in just like I showed you guys. And then getting the grommet in here with this handle piece, I'm telling you guys, it might be a two-beer job because it's going to test your patience. So once that's all back together, I'm going to slide the pin through, and uh, I'll get you guys caught up at that point. All right, so... I just have this pinched together right now. My suggestion before you do anything else, you get this pinched, is just to put one screw like down right here to just kind of hold things together so you can use two hands then. One screw in, it's holding the majority of this in place. Now, you'll have a grommet on this side that might have fallen out, so that'll have to go back in. You'll have a grommet, like I said, this is really, really hard to get that grommet to sit in this right here and you'll have another one on this side this side's not hard and then you got to push this pin the whole way through this might be difficult so I suggest maybe a c-clamp to get all that through so you can attach your e-clip on the other side that's another difficult part about this handle like I said it was a battle trying to get all that together so you're gonna need patience if you do take this handle off you can see what I'm doing here just to get that one e-clip in I'll just squeeze it together then with a pair of needle nose. There was a washer under this E-clip, so if that falls out, that's where that one washer goes. And I'll do the same thing on this side, put the E-clip back in. I'll have to compress it just to get it in there. Just another quick clip. What I did, compressed it, kept it off the center pin just enough, but I could squeeze on the other side to pull that pin through, attach the E-clip. I can go ahead and put the rest of my screws in, and then we'll reinstall the carburetor and the other parts. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is attach my throttle linkage into this whole little here. Rotate it around so it fits properly, and then we'll stick our bolts back on either side and attach that back. And that wasn't too bad, you just got to get it in the right position by tilting the carburetor and putting the throttle linkage up in there. So I got it where it needed to be. I ran my fuel line up, that's attached. From here, we'll tighten these. And remember that that gasket's on there. We'll tighten these, we'll find the holes, tighten the bolts back down. And then once it's snug, we'll tighten the nuts with our eight millimeter wrench. All right, I got tired of bending down, so I moved it up here. But let's make sure we got everything back correctly. We got our two bolts in. They're snug. Before I cinch it down, cinch the nuts down, I want to make sure that I got my choke back in the notch and it's lined up properly. So when I twist it up, it's choked. Okay, so the choke's right. Got the fuel line attached. We're going to check our throttle. Okay, throttle works. Push this down. Make sure that works. So that's locked, squeeze the trigger. Okay, so everything is working properly. Tighten the two nuts down, reattach the air filter, put the housing back on the top. Hopefully this has enough fuel in it that we can start it up and you guys can hear it. And I'm not being super aggressive, I'm just getting them snug. Snug, okay. Pop our air filter back on. Tighten that down. Like I said, we'll do the rest of this and then start it up. All right, so we're going to set it to the on position. Squeeze the trigger, press this down so it locks. Turn it to our choke. Pull it till it pops. A little pop there.
Alright guys, hopefully you learned something valuable from this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.